Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're just gonna be looking at the logarithmic regression curves of the price of Bitcoin. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we've spoken about these curves maybe once every month or two, the, the regression bands that we have. And, and I like to just do an update so that we so that we're you know we're here every step of the way right we don't just want to like not look at these for two years and then just come in you know uh two months after the peak and say oh yeah like it, it makes sense no we want to follow it every step of the way so that you know the viewers of this channel can can hopefully benefit from it so again this is not financial advice but we're just going to go ahead and dive in from here so these regression curves you can see are, are meant to be an illustration for general regimes of, of the price of Bitcoin where it tends to find support, looking at trends in terms of how the peaks are with respect to the regression lines. For instance, we've, we've noticed before these general periods of, of reaccumulation for the price of Bitcoin, right? And you can see the one that we're currently in. During the first cycle, the price of Bitcoin found support on the yellow regression line. During the second cycle, the price of Bitcoin found support on the orange logarithmic regression line. And so far, it has found support on the orange one again. It doesn't mean we're going to go down to the blue one. We speculated back over here that we might go into this regime if history is any indication. And we actually did go into that regime. If you look back in March, this capitulation in March of 2020 took us into the regime between the final two regression curves. So the reason why this is important, and I've said this before, is the, the capitulation of March 2020, in my mind, was more significant than the one we saw in the last quarter of 2018. And, and the reason being, as well as, you know, the one in 2020, I think, was not seen by most, not expected by most. I think looking for corrections was always a possibility, but waking up and seeing Bitcoin 60% down is certainly going to turn a lot of stomachs. And, and so that capitulation, in my mind, was actually more meaningful than the one back from 2018. Because the logarithmic regression lines increase monotonically, to, to stay within a given band, the price of Bitcoin has to be consistently and methodically moving upwards. Even though the price of Bitcoin hit 3100 back in 2018, the capitulation in 2020 took us to a lower regression band just because you can see that these logarithmic regression prices or the logarithmic regression curves are monotonically increasing. So the price of Bitcoin always has that pressure to continue moving up. Otherwise, it's going to continue to get knocked down into lower and lower regression bands. So there is that aspect to the price of Bitcoin and, and realizing that it is increasing. Logarithmic regression, by the way, just means that you know the faster growth happens earlier on and as you go through time we essentially are leveling off one common question is well you're already plotting it on a logarithmic scale so is this really you know how are you calling it uh, logarithmic growth all we're doing by the way we have the regression equation we have 10 and we're raising it to that power of that regression equation so that's how you that's how you conquer that issue if you're finding if you're fi if you're finding the own issue in your own you know fitting strategy right you have to you, you have to 10, you have to put in 10, raise it to the power of the regression equation, and then you can get curves that, that look like these. So as we said, during the first cycle, we had this accumulation phase, a general area of support. Second cycle, this one. Third cycle, this one. You can see we have come below it some, but in general, I think this is where we will slowly, um, you know, be between. And, and right now, if you look at the last cycle, we were between the orange and yellow band since you know the beginning of 2015 to the beginning of 2017. During this year, uh, or this market cycle, I've often said that 2019, 2020, and at least part of 2021, if not all of it, but at least part of it, will be the accumulation phase for Bitcoin. Now, with that said, you can still have short-term speculative bubbles. We had one in 2019. It's possible we see more speculative bubbles in the short term, you know, if, if the market cycle is going to take more years, if, as we anticipate on this channel, then it makes sense that there's going to be some periods of lower volatility for Bitcoin and some periods of higher volatility. And during these periods of higher volatility, 
you know, there's going to be, of, of course, people that think we're going to go to $100,000 immediately, but you just need to recognize that it will take longer. It has to take longer to get to 100K than it, you know, than, than orders of magnitude in the past because it's going to take a lot more volume. Now, I understand institutional money, um, the idea of that coming in. I still contend it's going to take longer than another year. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of people think, right, that we're going to peak next year at 100K. I, th I think it will take longer. Again, if it if it happens next year, great, we'll be ready for it. It just means we get we get rich quicker. Who cares, right? However, you need to be ready for the possibility that the peak will not be in in the in the last quarter of 2021. And if it's not, it doesn't mean that Bitcoin is is um, you know completely dead or anything like that. It just means it's continuing on the same cycle it's always been on, lengthening cycles. And and so this is this is my general idea here, and and so we're essentially looking for Bitcoin to track continuously and methodically moving up over the next several quarters. Okay, there's going to be some bad months. There'll be some good months. We've always said Bitcoin goes up and Bitcoin goes down, but it mainly goes up, and it's the fact that it mainly goes up which is why we're here, and and the fact that it mainly goes up quickly when it when it when it does sometimes go up parabolically. So one of the things we can look at are the peaks. And, and recognize that each peak is is kind of dropping down regression bands, approximately two and a half regression bands from peak to peak. We can look at the bottoms and and recognize that you know they also seem to be uh, somewhat dropping down. And, and and let me give you an example. So the first one, the first one after the major blow off up here was the 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 final capitulation found support around the purple regression band. Now we ultimately dropped down a lower regression band, but the price was higher. And again, it's because the regression bands monotonically increase. The second cycle, the lowest price of Bitcoin was actually all the way over here, beginning of 2015. And that found support at the yellow regression band. And then we move sideways into the orange one, okay? And then this one so far, the orange regression band was where we found support at the bottom. So if you look at where the price of Bitcoin found support at the bottom, it is it has dropped down a regression band. Okay, so this one in 2011, it was the purple one approximately. In 2015, it was the yellow one. And then in 2018, it was the orange one. And in each one, after we found support at that regression band, we ended up moving sideways at some point into the following into one regression band lower so it corresponded to moving into the purple and yellow regime this one came to the yellow and orange and then this one would be the yellow and, or the orange and blue and you can see we did at least already visit that at one point this market cycle so now if we connect these dots and project out and with the idea of lengthening cycles um generally speaking it, you know I, I think we're going to have a peak sometime and I've said this many times, sometime between the fourth quarter of 2022 and the second quarter of 2024. Some of you might think that's a cop out, right? Like I'll just pick a pick up a specific time. It, it, this is not the point, right? The point is not to, spe uh, to, to pick a very specific time and say it has to happen then because no one really knows when it's going to happen. I think the most likely time is 2023, but if, you know, if that's off by a few months or so, so be it. We cannot know exactly when it will happen. We just need to be ready for it when it does. And if we were to continue dropping down, uh, you know, two and a half log lines, it would put us peaking somewhere between the purple and green one. And and so this would mean, um, depending on on exactly when it happens, you know, somewhere between one hundred to two hundred thousand dollars per Bitcoin. And then subsequently, we would then go into a bear market and and probably bottom out maybe between thirty to fifty thousand dollars maybe like forty thousand dollars or so the reason i say that is because the price of bitcoin has always been at our fair value logarithmic regression curve at the halving and so the halving in 2024 would put the fair value i think at approximately forty thousand dollars so i think there's a good chance that um you know we'll at least be between you know around that level within a few percentage points you have to remember that if we're at forty-five or fifty thousand dollars, that might sound like a, a huge difference, but at that point, it's it's not as big of a difference as you know a, a ten thousand dollar increase now, just because it's all based on on percentages, and and so we you have to remember you have to we have to remember that at the end of the day, even if there is a bull market, there likely will be a a subsequent bear market, and so if you know one potential peak could look like this, where we we continue to track 
the current regression band for you know another year or so, and then we go parabolic and we move up regression bands. Another idea would be you know maybe maybe we have um, some some short term bubbles in here and we and we peak up higher and then come back down and still we're on on track. Now this is the curve that shows you the regression fit just to the the non bubble data and then the peaks and you can see how they are converging. We understand that the price of Bitcoin, the volatility is is reducing over time. And it's because of this reduction in volatility that we're also experiencing uh, diminishing returns each cycle. It doesn't mean you can't make a lot of money. It just means that you need to be cognizant of the fact that this likely does exist. And, and the, the people that are trying to tell you that Bitcoin will go to 500000 to a million dollars this market cycle are most likely not going to be correct because it's just it's, it's, it's too far extended from our current trend. It's not impossible, right? Nothing's impossible, of course, but the idea that it has to go there is what will get a lot of people in trouble. The same thing that happened in 2017, a lot of, you know, a lot of people kept saying, oh, it's gonna keep going higher. If you bought it, if you bought Bitcoin at 20K, then you probably were expecting it to go higher or 19.5, wherever it was. So bear in mind that there will come a time, most likely, where we will enter into this space up here. And a lot of people are going to look back and say, I wish I bought more Bitcoin in this regime. And, and the response is going to be like, well, you had years to do it. You legitimately had years to do it, just like you had years back in 2015, 2016, and even early 2017. We're going to look back and say, well, the very end of 2018, half of 2019, we had a bubble out of it. 2020, probably at least part of 2021, we will be within this regression band. So you would have had years to accumulate for it. So when you're, if, if you find your friends, you know, coming up here and buying Bitcoin at this point and saying, ah, oh, you're so lucky for buying it down here. You're not lucky. You just made a, 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 an investment based on, on the data. It was a calculated risk and it paid off. There's, there's, luck has literally nothing to do with it. Um, and so if, if, if what I would say, though, is if they're investing up here and they're able to see a decent ROI, that would be luck because that's just a gamble. Like, you know, investing down here, in my opinion, is an investment. Investing up here is a gamble because, yeah, in the short term, you might be able to squeeze a little bit more out of it, out of out of the price of Bitcoin. But you, you recognize that it's such a short term speculative play that you could, I mean, going to the casino could also accomplish the same effect. So this is the point. Investing versus versus you know just getting into that point where you're you know you're just throwing money into the wind and hoping it sticks somewhere so you know if we if we look at a potential path here right i mean one path would be to continue to slowly move up within the regression band and then to peak later another one would be to have short-term bubbles that we can always have and during an extended market cycle it's not unlikely to have them you know we had this one in in 20 in, in 2019 uh, where we peaked at 14k, you could argue that this market cycle had an inter intermediate one as well. Uh, you know, just over 100 to 200 dollars before it continued on up. This one we had one at 14k. It's possible we have more, but ultimately speaking, I think the the one that we're looking for to get us to 100k is still a few years off. So if we overlay the regression bands with the um, with all of them. You know, our, our one to non-double data, the one fit to peaks, and the other ones, you can see how how they how they differ, and is the reason why we're dropping down regression bands each time. Because I mean, you can see the 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 rate of change here, the slope, um, it, it is it is decreasing, right? I mean, this one is is angled more upwards, this one is not, and so we are dropping down these regression bands. So let me know what you guys think. Like, do you do you guys like the videos on the regression of of Bitcoin? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Remember, we do have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. You can check that out. Um, if you do check it out, remember you will get access to premium reports, premium videos, a private Telegram alerts channel, a private Telegram chat room, a risk dashboard, which is what I use to trade. Also, I try to identify bubbles as well, short-term and, and, and macro bubbles. And um, also a dynamic DCA strategy dashboard, which will help try to... Um, uh, help you understand how you know what risk tolerance you are okay with. So you can pay with crypto and get a discount of up to 15% for paying for 12 months. So check it out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you guys like the content. Give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel in the description below. Help me get to 50,000 subscribers. Trying to get there by the end of the year. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Bye.